Hi, it's Brian Timoney here and uh, welcome on to today's show. Now, we, as always, we have some really interesting questions lined up for you today. And this first question is really interesting because it's a chicken and egg situation, you know. So the question is, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Let's find out. Let's go to the first question. How can you get experience before getting an agent when jobs are through agents? A fool. Okay, right. Now, in answer to this question, I'm going to assume that you have trained as a professional actress, right? And um, that you're now out there in the industry and you're looking to get an agent, you're looking to, uh, to get work. Now, um, because if you haven't done that, you haven't trained as a professional, then obviously that's the first step. But I'm going to assume that you've done that, right? And now you're approaching agents and you're trying to get work. So, um, Here's the thing is that not all work um, will go through agents. Obviously, you want to get an agent because all the, the big stuff goes through agents. Um, but in order to get experience, and that's really what you've said in your question, to gain more experience, then there's a number of things that you can do that, that you know, really won't involve an agent um, because you could get work on, uh, for example, a short film or a student film, which will allow you to be on set and gain a little bit more experience in front of the camera. Or indeed, um, in London, of course, we have um, fringe productions that happen that you may be able to get involved in as well, which are either no or low paid, which will allow you to gain experience. But here's another thing I think that's really important is that I think work begets work. So as soon as you start um, working with other actors, getting to meet other directors um, and gaining more experience, it usually leads to more work. So um, apart from the fact of, of allowing you to gain more experience, I really think it will probably lead to more work in the long run too. So that's what I would look out for. Look out for these, um, these other opportunities that don't necessarily go through um, agents. And what I would do is though, is when you get copies of that work, for example, say you're doing a student film, um, make sure you get a copy of that work because that can then be added to a showreel that you can send into an agent and then secure a good agent and then you can go on to, to the other work that you're looking to get. Okay, so um, let's go on to the next question. Any tips on learning several scripts? Horeb Kohan. Okay, well, I think this is quite an interesting situation to be in. You have more than one role to work on, which is a great um, position to be in, isn't it? So um, how do you deal with these different scripts? Well, the first thing is, I don't really think the main issue is different scripts. I think it's playing different characters because at the end of the day, the scripts are going to get learned, right? Um, the big issue for you is really embodying a different person, you know, different characters and being able to separate them. So um, here's what I think you should do is always try to do them on different days. So if you're working on one particular character, then do that for the full day or as much as you can on that day. And then the next day, deal with the next one. Um, it depends on what the situation is because sometimes actors find themselves in a situation of performing a particular uh, show at night and during the day they're starting to rehearse a new show or work on a different uh, TV or film uh, project. So there's no getting away from the fact that you may be forced into the situation of playing both characters on the same day. But as much as you, tr you can, you want to try and separate them. Um, and with regards to performance, by the time you get to performance, you've worked on the character, you've done all the rehearsal process. So there shouldn't be much of a conflict with the, the new role that you're starting to work on. Another good thing to do with this is if you can at home, try and um, do the characters in different rooms. So if you've got the room uh, to do this, um, what you should do is go into one room and make that the room where you work on, say, character A, and then go to another room and that's where you work on character B. Um, there's something about going into that one particular place and doing that character and then going to the other place and playing, playing the other character allows you to create a separation and in your own mind and allows you to easily, much more easily access um, your creativity around that particular character and individual. So that's how I think you should deal with um, different scripts. Let's move on to the next question. How can you start an acting career if you have to work full time to pay bills? Demelza. Now, is this another chicken and egg situation, I ask myself, you know, because you're kind of asking the question about how do you escape a job to become an actor, but you can't really become an actor without leaving the job, right? So um, how do you deal with this chicken and egg situation again? Um, well, um, this is what happened to me because many moons ago, um, I, I did actually work in a bank before I became an actor. 
And I was in exactly that situation. You know, I would go every day and work in the bank. And I was a terrible banker, by the way. Um, yeah, I just wasn't interested in it. So I used to make lots of mistakes. I'm sure they're still finding mistakes in that bank to this day. Um, and I, but I did it because I really, you know, I had to pay the bills. I had to, to do something to create an income. But there did come a point where I thought, this is not really what I want to do with my life. And I had to make the decision um, about moving on, about leaving that particular career. Um, now, how did I do it? I didn't do it overnight. I didn't suddenly wake up one day and think, that's it, I'm off. I did it gradually over time. Um, the first thing that I did was that I, was, I wanted to test acting out. I wanted to have the experience of what it was like to act. Um, and so I went and did some amateur dramatics and I got involved in an amateur dramatic group. I did some plays, had the experience of working on stage and what that was like, um, and I loved it. And I did quite a few of those productions. Then it kind of got to the point where I was getting really serious and I thought, now I've got to train to become an actor and, and really sort of move on. Um, so what I did was I saved up. I mean, I had actually in the end, I had more than one job because I was working several jobs in order to save up to be able to go and train and then ultimately leave that, that career. Um, so I think that's what you've got to do because here's the other thing you have to consider. Even once you've trained and you're coming into the industry, it's good to have a little bit of um, money set aside to invest in the launching of your career because you're gonna to have to pay for things like headshots or show reels um, and so on. And you, you, it's good for you to be able to, um, to have that cash in order to do that. So probably saving up is not a bad idea and putting a little bit of cash aside if you can in order to allow you to change career. Now, that might not be what you, be what you want to hear, you know, um, but at the end of the day, if you're going to train to be anything or go and do any particular job, that's what kind of needs to happen, um, ultimately. But you can do it, like I say, in stages, dip your toe in the water, try some amateur dramatics out, perhaps, to begin with, and then you decide, this is definitely what I want to do. Then you have to find a way of saving up and then ultimately leaving that job. And by the way, you see, when you've got to the stage where you've trained and maybe you've, I don't know, you could have taken some part-time courses um, and you might find yourself still in the situation where you're still doing that job. Um, I think it's very important at some point to leave that job. Um, otherwise, you become very dependent on it. You think, you know, well, I'll just keep doing it. And before you know it, the real years roll by and you're still doing that job. At some point, you have to cut off the, um, any other possibility and commit yourself completely to the fact that you're going to become an actor and get into the profession. Because when you do that, you also start to look for ways of making it work, of making it happen. But while there's always that little life raft sitting there, you sometimes maybe are not as dynamic as you could be. So that's what I recommend that you do. Um, start dipping your toe in the water and then fully commit and save up over time so that you've got a little bit of money that you can spend on your training and launching your career at the end of it. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the show. Um, if you'd like to, um, to ask me a question, I'm always open to answering your questions. Now, how do you do it? You can do it by sending in a question on Facebook or Twitter, Snapchat, email me, or even better, send in a video of you asking the question with an exotic background, like I have here, you know, windows in the background and people in offices. Um, yeah, so send, send in your question and uh, I look forward to answering it on the next show.